Hi everybody, today we're going to be going over a program I made to pull intraday data from the internet. So just a quick overview on this. What it does basically is it uses the Google Finance API um, in order to extract intraday stock data. Um, so for those of you, excuse me, for those of you who may not be familiar with uh, intraday data in general, I'm going to give you an overview on what it looks like. I'm going to pull up Google right here and bring this over. And we're going to go to uh, Google Finance, um, and then, I don't know, we'll type in Apple. And we can see this chart right here pops up right away. And I don't even think we need to type in Google Finance for this, but we can use this as an example. So you notice right here, if we move very slowly along this line, um, we can get different prices, right? Obviously, I mean, this is just a price chart throughout the day. Um, but you can break this down into small intervals and you can get really granular with this so I mean there's obviously sources of data where you're getting you know tick data second data all sorts of stuff but um, for the most part the only free thing you're limited to is intraday data by the minute um, now there's actually a way to get this um, so you could theoretically try going on the network tab but uh, I think that's a little bit uh, harder than you know you'd have to actually you can do it actually in a lot more simpler ways basically so uh let's type in uh this is literally what i did to find it first uh when i this was a long time ago too i don't even know if it's still here oh it is so um here's the url that i found um and i'm sure this is pretty well known so what you do is you can copy this or actually they have an example right here so what i want to highlight really quickly is that this 60 right is the is the interval Okay, so that's how many seconds of data you're looking at in that in that regard, and this is pretty much what you're limited to. And then this is the amount of days. So the interval. So this is one minute, and then this is the amount of days right here. And this uh, whoever wrote this post highlighted this as well. So we can go right here, and this is one source of intraday data. Um, now you may notice um, we have ten days in here, and this is where it starts to get a little hairy because you have to actually format this URL differently in order to get the intraday data. So we see right here, P equals 10, and what happened to our um, our 60 right here, right? Why is this just not pasting? Well, the issue here is that, number one, this is probably a pretty old post, um, and you can see the URL gets reformatted. Um, now let's try changing the day really quickly, um, and now no data comes up. So what I did um, was I changed the uh, URL and I'm gonna have it right here okay so I just slightly modified it and I'll just copy it even with the variables so so what essentially you'll be able to see what data we get back um, I'm just gonna replace the frequency right here with uh, 60 60 and P is equal to Let's say one, and then what's the ticker? I don't know. Give me a random ticker, Apple. And now we've have the proper URL right here. Um, so what this essentially is is um, a CSV file, basically. I think you can. Well, you could probably download it as something else as well. Um, I'm assuming this is probably some sort of a REST API. I might not be correct on that, but uh, this is, you can download this in CSV format right here, and this is a CSV format because you can see the commas separating all the values. So this is your source of intraday data, and you get every minute for the entire day. And this is pretty cool and very valuable for algorithmic trading. Um, obviously, it can get a lot more granular, but the issue is we can only access up to, I believe, 14 days of data. So, um, we have this big file right here, but this is as much as we're going to get. Um, if you type in, let's say, oh, I want 100 days of minute-by-minute minute data, we're not going to be able to do that. Um, it's going to be the same amount. We can only pull up to 14 days, and this is actually very troubling because sometimes you may want data that may be in a range of a month, a year, whatever. And the reason I made this script was to not have to pay for giant data sets and literally automate doing it at the end of every day. So this does its job. It schedules it with the schedule module within Python. And this does its job at the end of the day, every day at 4.30, um, a half hour later than the market closes. So, and it does this literally every Monday through Friday. And obviously, if it's a holiday, um, 
I won't run it for that day. I could probably do a better job and code in the holiday list and have it not run on the holidays, but I made it simple for now. Um, but basically, all this does is it takes this file in from the internet for every ticker in the S&P 500. I'm doing it. I'm going to back test the strategy for the S&P um, and kind of try to do something with just the S&P. Although you could apply this to a ton of tickers. Excuse me. Um, so what it does basically, we have a couple things we have to keep into consideration here. We have a timestamp right here. Um, and the issue with this is that this is not a regular timestamp. We have an A in, right in front of it. So this, I believe, is a hex timestamp. Might be something different. Someone might have to correct me on that one. But if you extract just the um, just the numerical part from it, even though this is alphanumeric, um, if you extract this, this would be today's date. Um, but what we need to do is create a timestamp or create a date for and, and time as well for every record in here and this is what this does so we input or read in the csv file from the internet for each ticker and what we do right here is we create a date for every tick okay and this is going to do it for every minute during the day um and we're also going to create a symbol for every uh tick as well so each individual um minute I should say rather than tick is going to be a record in our database so for that we need a date and that will occur with the time as well um, we need a symbol for it corresponding to it and what's going to happen after this is we're going to output all that into a data frame okay and then we're going to output that to a database after so basically input the CSV create the date create the symbol and then we're going to output it to a data frame okay with specific uh, column headers and then we need to take that data and store it in a MySQL database, which I use. I use MySQL as my database management system. So the issue here is that you can't really store this in CSVs that easily. This thing already has, I'll show you right now. Um, I kept it in one table just for the sake of simplicity and recommendations on Stack Overflow for stock data. Other people might do it differently. I did not create one for every table uh, or a ticker for every table or something like that. Did not do that. Um, so you can see right here what we have when it's finally outputted. We have date, time, um, and then the symbol. And there are, if we look in here, uh, what is that? 8 million plus rows. So we got 8,366,824 rows total. So this is getting pretty big pretty fast. And this is going back till uh, I'll select uh, min date, uh, date where symbol equals uh, mmm for 3m and we have to select it from our table sp500 and let's enter it and let's see where this goes back to and it goes all the way to today obviously because the market was open today so i'm assuming it's like september or something i forget when i started so i should have a couple months of this oh wow um even earlier than that so yeah october 28th uh so that's as far as it goes back to and i'm hopefully going to do this for another three or four months just run it every day um I just wanted to make it because I couldn't find anything free on the internet. So this might be a way to gather some data really quickly and inefficiently. But um, just to go over this really quickly, uh, the way I'm storing the data from um, I'm outputting each data frame as a CSV, the reading in the CSV in this store data function, and this is called automatically too. Um, and what happens is I'm using uh, PyMySQL as a library to output it. So we have to iterate through every single row in the data frame. Um, and I'm not going to go through the specifics of this. If you guys want me to make a tutorial on this, I will. But essentially what we're doing is iterating through every single row in the data frame and putting it to the database. Um, you can see that right here where we're creating the table. If it doesn't exist, um, it already does exist, so we're going to skip by that. Um, we can do that through PyMySQL. I have a bunch of tutorials on PyMySQL. Um, and what we're doing now is iterating through and outputting every single element of that row or column in that row, um, what we're doing is taking those and then outputting it to the database. So pretty simple. Um, I should say individual uh, element of the row. Um, but this is the whole gist of it. So again, what we're doing right here, taking this, parsing it, creating a date and symbol, turning it to a data frame, and then putting it to this database right here. Um, I'm sure someone's done it in a much more simple way, but this is the way I did it. So yeah that's it and that's how i get intraday data if you go back on here you can see some other ways i don't know if they work anymore i can assure you that this doesn't work because yahoo's api is basically dead 
and I have no idea what these websites are. So Google Finance pretty much is a go-to. You can also use Bloomberg. Um, so I guess I'll double this in the uh, title of the video as how to get intraday data from different sources as well or something. So the way you get it from Bloomberg is sort of similar. Um, I'll just type in Apple for a stock quote. And what you can do, and this is also you know a double whammy for anyone that hasn't done this before. Um, if we can somehow interact with a stock chart, Maybe I can view. Here we go. Um, so if you right click and inspect the element, um, hopefully this works because I don't know if they've changed uh, their. Uh, I think their website's changed a little bit. I don't know if this works. But what you're going on to right here is uh, this is sort of a section for Ajax websites. Um, so when the data is coming in and out from different sources, you can kind of see with the network tab and the XHR file. These are going to be all the data files that are coming in and out. Um, again. This is uh this is sort of an Ajax technique where it's fairly not that recent, but it's it's fairly important to know, especially so with Ajax websites, all this information is updating dynamically without having to refresh anything or without having to you know use a new tab or anything like that. So we'll re um, reload this, view the full chart, and I see data right here. That's not it. It's somewhere over here. And here we go. Um, you can get intraday data from that. I'll link this in the description too. Um, you can mess around with this as well. I don't think it's the entire day. I had a problem getting it with the entire day with this source, but this is another way to get intraday data, but this is only minute by minute data. Um, you're not going to get probably higher granularity data other than, other than this. This is probably as good as it's going to get. This is pretty valuable stuff. I mean, it's really expensive data that you're going to have to buy if you're trying to do this, especially if you're algorithmic trading. So this is just a general overview on how to get intraday data um, and also how I created a script um, and other people have to, to take this data in every day, parse it, and then store it in a database so I can do whatever with it, backtest a theory, whatever. And I will be backtesting a hypothesis with the S&P, so I'll update you guys on that later. Um, for now, that's it for this video. Any questions, comment in the description. Other than that, I'll see you guys later. Bye.